Hi, I'm Gerard Jerry Mulligan. I wrote on the uh, morning show, I wrote on late night, and I wrote on late show. And in 2004, I was tired of writing Britney Spears top tens and caring about stuff I didn't care about. I decided to retire to my lovely estate here in suburban New Jersey, Highfield Manor. We have a, a large staff. We have many animals, many outbuildings. It's quite a luxurious place, and I want to thank my television family for making it possible. Here are some of my favorite moments from the show that I enjoyed working on and watching for so many years. This clip is one of my appearances on the morning show, which again was live, so no room for error, although God knows we made a lot of them. This was about either a day or a week before the final show, October of 1980, and it was the very first uh, incarnation of uh, Halloween costumes, which became a regular feature on both the later shows. And you'll see that because of my ineptness as an actor, it's hard to tell who exactly I'm representing with my costume. And finally, uh, a little tip. It seems like in every neighborhood, there's always a kid who just doesn't seem to outgrow Halloween. He comes back year after year after year. Here he is. There you are. Thank you. I'd like to thank our models this morning from the Hunter College Elementary School, except for the big dumb kid. He, uh... You may have trouble recognizing that uh, costume. It was Tweety Bird. And despite the many notes from director Hal Gurney, when I came through the door, I did not face forward. I looked like a, somebody in a giant yellow nighty or onesie or something. And I'm sorry. I still regret it. I still think about it. You know, I wasn't just a writer on the show. For a while, f for reasons that Frankly, none of your business. I became a segment producer, which meant that I would handle one or two segments per show. I would interview the guests before the show. I would prepare a list of questions for Dave to ask the guest. Sometimes the guests didn't show, and sometimes they gave us advance warning, and sometimes they didn't. Ah, uh, now this is interesting. I'm going to explain something here to you folks. My next guest played drums and sang with the legendary rock group, The Band. He then went on to a career in films, receiving great acclaim for his portrayal of Loretta Lynn's father and coal miner's daughter. Not only that, he's not here tonight. <laughs> Has not arrived. Uh, he, for some reason or another, he, we believe that he is in transit and perhaps will be here. Uh, so in the meantime, until Mr. Lee Von Helm possibly arrives, uh, we thought we'd uh, let you meet the gentleman who was responsible for this booking on our program, uh, <laughs> talent coordinator and segment producer, Mr. Gerard Mulligan, ladies and gentlemen. What other things would we have heard from Lee Von had he been... I think he had some great stories. <laughs> I think we booked this guy because we knew he had anecdotes. You know, kind of a natural storyteller. Natural storyteller. Yeah. Not, not good with time, but real good with, with, uh -huh. with the anecdotes. Yeah. What, Al, let me ask you this. What, what do we know of uh, Levon's relationship with Bob Dylan now? It's real curious. I was going to ask him about that because, <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you know, he backed, he backed Dylan uh, at his famous Forest Hills appearance in 65 when Dylan went electric, which uh -huh. all the fans know. And then Dylan made a, a world tour and he took all the band with him except Levon Helm. And we don't know if Levon... Levon uh, went back to Arkansas, right? Yeah, if we don't know if he didn't want to tour with Dylan or what the deal was, because later he, he did play behind They're back Dylan. together, yeah. It would have been great. Why don't you run down... <laughs> you know, one of the segments that I produced in my brief stint as a segment producer involved Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler. People keep asking me, did you know, was it pre-planned? I swear on my dog's life, it was not planned. Andy Kaufman was so committed to stuff. I think he really took the risk of severe injury to get a moment that would stand out, and stand out it did. Well, right. suit, and yeah. I could have sued you. I could have sued you for everything you're worth. Well, and I didn't because that's, I'm not that kind of a guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, what kind of a you're, guy are you? No. No. You're not the kind of guy you are. I'll just be over here. Uh, here. We're going you, to you know, as far pause as I'm here for station you know, I, identification and get the hoses out here. Uh, no, no. Okay, no. But you, you're a You know, speaking of Andy Kaufman, he was a genius. 
He was hilarious and he was totally, totally committed. On the morning show, he was booked. He showed up on a certain date, a mess. His hair was filthy, his face was filthy, he was just a mess. He said that ever since taxi had been canceled, he'd, he'd been having hard times. He'd been sleeping in doorways overnight and he wanted to come on the show and talk about it. So as he explained it to me and Merrill, what his plan was, was to come out on the show, explain to David he was on very hard times, the show was over, he would probably never get another sitcom, he wasn't getting any gigs, there was only one solution. And at that point, he was going to pull out a gun and shoot himself in the head. Merrill and I looked at each other and thought, well, sure, that's a good idea. How about other ideas, Andy? Any other ideas? And we had a compromise. And this is the compromise that we came up with, rather than having Andy pretend to kill himself on national television. Um, so anyway, I quit the show and my wife. Uh, at that time, I was wrestling women on Saturday Night Live. I got a lot of hate mail. And um, no producer would hire me after that. So one day I was at my manager's office uh, trying to get an engagement for a dinner theater in Wisconsin. And I got a call from my wife's lawyer. She wanted a divorce. And she got a divorce. She got the kids, the house. She got all my money. Uh, not all my money, but some. Anyway, she, she got everything. I moved to New York, and now that's what I'm doing now, living in New York. And I, um, I, I don't really have anything. Um. <coughs> 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 so anyway, um, if anybody could, I, I know this sounds like a cliche, but uh, if you could, any extra money that you have, um, I would appreciate it. Please, you have to please come with me. Right. We have to go. We can't do this here, so we have to go. Come on, come on, come on. Be a good boy. That's it. Stop. Uh, I'm not going to stay. All right, fine. Well, well I'm so All right, there we go. Um... <laughs> always a pleasure to have... <laughs> always a pleasure to have the young talent on the show. You know, we, when you do five shows a week, you need a lot of comedy. We got our inspiration from many places. The next uh, little ongoing bit was inspired by something my mother used to say all the time. She would say, Gerard, why don't you take an umbrella? I said, well, I don't look like it's going to rain. I don't think I need an umbrella. Well, Gerard, it's better to have an umbrella and not need it than need an umbrella and not have it. All right, every uh, Wednesday night uh, yeah, Dave, this Dave, summer, we'll Dave. be having... Excuse me, Dave. Yes, Alan, what can I do for you? I have something new for summer. Uh-huh, and uh, what is that? All summer long, in the green room, Lou Rawls! <laughs> wow, so Alan... Why do, we have, why do we have Lou Rawls sitting in the green room? Why, you ask? Hey, say it with me, folks. Because it's better to have Lou Rawls and not need him than to need Lou Rawls and not have him. <laughs> you know, things didn't always go smoothly for staff members here at The Late Show and Late Night. Here's an example of one thing that, uh, that went pretty seriously awry. Letter number four. Dear Dave, boy, you really blew it. I was in your studio audience when you had audience brush with greatness. Because I was only a lonely standby... Uh, I did not get a chance to volunteer my story. I sat on the lap of Luciano Pavarotti. Yeah, uh, it's like being in a state park. Uh, <laughs> now, I think that's pretty good. Not everyone could even find his lap. At any rate, I'm disappointed I didn't get to tell my story and missed out on my chance to win a facial blotter, and I thought you should be aware of what you missed. This is from a faithful late-night insomniac, Elizabeth Field, New York. Gee, Elizabeth, you know, you're absolutely right. I guess we did blow it. That would have been a great story to hear on the show. And uh, I'd like to get to the bottom of this. So, Henry, Henry, do you mind coming out here for just a minute, please? Now, yes, Mr. Letterman. Yes, Henry, uh, how long have you been picking out the audience participants for <laughs> Brush with Greatness? 29 years, Mr. Letterman. <laughs> and, uh, and, yes, uh, now I have only one year to go for my pension. Yeah, less than a year to go. Well, <clears throat> Henry... 
How, how is it that with all of that experience, nearly 30 years, uh, you didn't pick the woman in the audience who sat on Luciano Pavarotti's lap uh, for a brush with greatness? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I remember that day. Uh, I left the clinic and I, I was mugged. They, they took my coat and my eyeglasses. Uh -huh. So when I faced the audience, I uh, couldn't read the uh, writings of the questionnaires very oh, well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I was shivering so much and I couldn't write anything down either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about I'm that. I'm so here. sorry yeah, about that. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Well, you're fired. <laughs> That's quite a feeling to get booed on your own show. So. What about my pension? Well, Henry, what about the lady who sat on Pavarotti's lap? <laughs> Why don't you just get your stuff together and get a cab, will you? <laughs> oh, my poor Henry. Well... <laughs> Oh, all right, you give him a job. You know, when you work in network television, even on a show like Late Night or Late Show, you used to face a phenomenon called sweeps, where three times a year, Nielsen and, and company take a measurement of how many people are actually watching your little production. Uh, at any rate, this was a very early attempt to uh, do something exciting during sweeps week. Gene, are you aware this is an important ratings period? That's right. So what? Big deal. This is, this is our ratings month. You're right. Well, Who listen, cares? You know that I am second to no one in my, in my extreme love for Arnie Barnes. But right. I've got to say that it seems to me we should be doing some big gimmicky things, some real big audience grabbing things for Paul, the ratings. Paul, gimmicks? Audience grabbers? Paul, I'm telling you, that is unfair to the fine group of folks who watch this Mr. show Letterman. night in and night out. What? That we would Mr. do something Letterman, loaded with gimmicks Dave. or special effects to attract ratings. Dave, I'm Mr. telling Letterman, you, Paul, what please. we need to do is the best damn show we Mr. can. Letterman, night in and night. Dave, Mr. Letterman, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's, it's my wife. I, I think she's in labor. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> how, how far apart are the contractions? They're less than a minute apart. Oh, my oh, God. Dave. A minute apart. Hold, Dave, stay Dave, right let's there. let's get her to the hospital. No, no, there's no time for that, Paul. We'll deliver the baby right here in the studio. <laughs> right on there. We don't have to. Boil some water. Boil some water. Okay, okay, okay. All right, hang on. All right, all right. Real hard now. All right, re oh, 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 my goodness. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. what a sweetie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Oh, it's magic. It's a magic night, isn't it, Paul? A woman up there just wow. gave birth to about a 10-month-old baby. <laughs> Wearing a diaper. But, you know... You know, the staff used to get one week a year off for vacation. And uh, sometimes we came back and used our experiences as fodder for the show. Uh, Gerard Mulligan. Gerard, yes, sir. nice to see you. You've been with us for a while. Quite a while. Gerard is uh, one of our writers. How did you spend your uh, a week off? Well, I stayed home in New Jersey, and on Monday of that week, I went to the Brownie investiture of my daughter, Catherine. Oh, that must have been very nice. It was terrific. We very very excited. exciting for you. Very for proud you. of her. Yeah. She was very proud. Good. It worked out great. How old is your daughter? She's six years old. Mm -hmm. And was this like the thrill of her life? Well, so far, yeah. yeah. But we're hoping. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping there'll be, hoping there'll be other things. <laughs> okay, other, well, that's good. Other things You have to start line. somewhere, sure. Other, I exactly. understand that, yeah. And uh, this is where she gets her brownie uniform, uh -huh. officially gets it. So it's it. a big day for her. Yeah, in fact, I brought her along tonight in the brownie uniforms so and get a look at what. Oh, that'd be great. She's here, Catherine? ladies and gentlemen. Gerard Mulligan's daughter, Catherine Mulligan. Hey, Hi, Catherine. How are you? Hi. Nice.
nice to see you. Thank you very much. Does dad say nice things about me at the house? Uh, no. All right. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have some photos We'd here. Like I'll, photos. I'll hold these up and you just tell I'll us tell what, what we're happened. looking at. All right, this is uh, Gerard spent his vacation. Now, this is Kathy right before right. she You're made the... Beautiful young girl. Thank you. Made, right before she made her brownie vow. Mm -hmm. All right. This is Catherine actually, actually making the, the brownie vow, taking the brownie, brownie oath. Looks like she might actually be singing the brownie I vow. I think she did it. Yes, she did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and what else? Well, what is oh, this This one is here? the uh, proud dad and daughter. This is kind of strange. <laughs> Very proud. You have a long, difficult life ahead of you. Some of my favorite moments on the show were with my friend Chris Elliott. Uh, this is my very last appearance with Chris and my last appearance on the show because, you know, Dave got fired and the show was over. Yeah, he sounds like he needs, I'm he, fine. needs oxygen I don't or something. Do you have oxygen? Plenty of oxygen. I'm fine. fine. There's no oxygen. You're all right, fine. Gary, you're not all right well, there's only right? one thing I can do, and well, that's I'm fine. I'm uh, fine. mouth to mouth. Well, he's I'm still fine. conscious. No, he don't. I'm really no, fine. No, shush, oh, you're fine. Let me just show you how this is done. Nobody wants this. Oh, come on. We're not infantile children here. I'm fine. Okay, now look, what has to be done, let me show you, Dave. get off that guy. The proper way to do this is... You, you pinch something. I don't right, know what. Ahead, I don't pinch, know if it's his nose whatever or his you ass. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no. And then, uh, then when you're ready, uh, you just go do right it in. For the uh, love of God. Oh. <laughs> He's fine. Get off him. All right, stop it. He's. Oh. Whoo. Uh, there you go. You feel better, Jerry? No. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of weeks after this aired, uh, I was at a benefit on Long Island, and uh, I ran into my brother-in-law, Hank, who was a, a big Suffolk County uh, cop, brass. And he said to me, hey, Jerry, I saw you kissing Chris on TV. I had to point out that I was kissed by Chris. I did not kiss Chris. Not that it would make any difference. You know, I'm one of the people most responsible for the popularity of the dance craze, the Macarena. After I did it on the show, it seemed like everybody was doing it. Well, like most fads, people got sick and tired of it, including the host of uh, the show. Open history hey, right there. It's, it's Macarena the... time! What? Oh, yeah.